time exploring Italy as the locals know it, seeking out its hidden gems. I'm traveling the heart of Abruzzo. As I'm being told, the scenery here is something I've never seen before. It's gonna be great. A 90-minute drive takes me deep into the rural heartland of this ancient state to the Sirente Bellino National Park. And on the way, the landscape is a feast for my eyes. Jutting out the lunar-scaped mountains are majestic castles hewn out of the rock. This particular castle, Rocca Calascio, was originally built as a watchtower in the 10th century and is the highest fort in all of Italy, perched nearly 1,500 meters above sea level. <laughs> Descending down, I find myself in the rugged heart of the region where I meet Mauro di Fonza, who has farmed this terrain for 15 years, and the wild landscape has some very unique challenges. I, I, I said, you know, here is in paradise. I mean, what, what can you go wrong around here? It's all nice and peaceful. And he just said, well, yes, it's nice and peaceful if you don't have bears and uh, a wolf is trying to eat the uh, sheep. I wasn't expecting that. He said, but don't fear, because he's got the proper dogs that if the uh, wolves of the uh, bears are coming, ah, they're gonna attack the, uh, the bears and the wolves and everything is gonna be all right. These incredible dogs defend the sheep from wild brown bears. They are trained to protect by bonding with their charges right from when they are pups. I did ask what kind of dog is a dog that uh, can actually attack a bear and a wolf. And he said it's called Maremano Abruzzese. It's called Maremano Abruzzese. So if you're at home, have a problem with bears and wolves, that's the dog that you need to get. Maremano Abruzzese. A typical flock can be as large as 200. As they roam freely, 10 dogs keep them safe. He said to go down sopra and turn the pegole, and turn them from the other side. With the fischi. With the fischi. So he's telling the sheep with a little whistle to turn left and go towards the uh, mountain. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try, I'm going to try. Watch this. <laughs> they like my children, they don't listen at all. Okay, I've tried the carrot. Maybe it's time to reach for the steak. This is harder than I thought. I think, I think I need a break. Gino, vieni con me. You gonna break? Well, I wasn't expecting this kind of romantic setting under a tree, and apparently he's got something that he wants me to try. E per vedere se un se un vero abruzzese lo devi saper cucinare. Okay. He said there is a, a local speciality from Abruzzo, and he's challenging me. He said, if you can cook this, that means you are real Abruzzese, which is a man who comes from Abruzzo. Ma che è? L'arrosticino. L'arrosticino Abruzzese. Arrosticino Abruzzese. Abruzzese. Mauro tells me that the arrosticini is a typical shepherd's snack made from bite-sized mm. chunks of mutton. <laughs> I'm going to show you that I can be an Abruzzese man if I want to. I'm not one to shy away. This has inspired me to make lamb skewers with a green bean and goat's cheese salad. I'm going to start right here with a fillet of lamb. I'm using fillet because it's nice and tender. I've cut the lamb fillet probably about the size of an ice cube. In there, straight away, we're going to add runny honey. And very important because it's going to give a nice sweetness to the meats. Add three or four teaspoons of honey. Sprinkle a tablespoon of fennel seeds, a pinch of black pepper, then chop up a bunch of fresh mint leaves. I want to use them fresh because I want the best flavors for my skewers. Add a squeeze of lemon juice, and finally, a good splash of extra virgin olive oil. Now, at this point, I don't know if you realize, I haven't used any salt whatsoever. I got a theory with salt and meat. If I'm going to put salt in here now on the meat and then put them on the barbecue, I'm always afraid that the salt is going to drain all the moisture away from the meat and it's going to make the meat very tough. 
I always season the meat with salt once the meat is cooked. Now, I could leave this to rest for 12 hours, 13 hours. It doesn't really matter. Remember, the longer you keep in marinating and the more flavors you're gonna get. The important thing though, if you keep to marinate for 24 hours, make sure that you keep the meat in the fridge. With my meats, I'm going to serve peppers. And my tip with peppers, never use the green one because the green ones, they're very bitter. I always use the yellow one or the red one. So you want to cut the peppers more or less the same size of the meat. I like to use metal skewers when I do my skewers because they're very easy. If you want to use the wooden one, fine, but then you have to soak them in water, otherwise they burn. Metal one, I think they're more kind of a brutal man, macho man. I always put two cubes of lamb followed by a piece of pepper until the skewer is full. There is only one way to know when a barbecue is ready and this is what my grandfather told me. You shouldn't be able to keep your hand on the barbecue, I mean do not touch the grill of the barbecue, just, just above the grill, no longer than three seconds. If you can do that longer than three seconds, it means it's not hot enough. One, two, that's it, it's ready, it's ready. There is a sexy sound that I want you to hear. There's nothing better than a skewer going on a hot barbecue. Listen to this. I told you it was sexy. Now, I want to cook my skewers for about 12 minutes. And the reason is because I want to do three minutes on each side. So I've got enough time to do my green bean salad. For the side salad, I boil the beans for three minutes. I'm adding in extra virgin olive oil, some fresh lemon juice, then half handful of pine kernels. And the reason why I put the pine kernels is because I like the crunchiness. Salt and pepper goes in there. And my last ingredient in the salad, goat cheese. Use a soft goat cheese, so then when you toss everything together, it's gonna kind of become like cream. I'm going to serve it right here on my chopping board. Ah, that looks good. Now is the time to season these skewers because it's right at the end and straight onto the serving plate. Final squeeze of lemon juice. That's it, I'm happy. And this is how I made my version of a rosticini. Mauro! Time for the taste test. Honesto, eh? Okay. Bye. È buono, è dolce. No, buonissimo. Mm? Buono, buono. Relaxi. That is impossible not to like. Sono buonissimi, eh? ma non è proprio l'arrosticino originale abruzzese. Quindi la cittadinanza onoraria. Ma sai che questa volta <laughs> non ti è concessa. He said they're delicious, but it's not going to give me the uh, honorary of being an Abruzzo man. I don't really care. I'm very proud to be a Neapolitan and I'm very proud of my skewers. And uh, I'm actually very proud to be here and uh, uh, to make a new friend. But it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. You should try this. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you can find all Gino's delicious recipes and more in his accompanying book, Gino's Hidden Italy, out now.